Hi everyone, Daryl Legacy here, Instructional Designer at Hack. D2L has a feature that can help you contact your students if their participation is slipping or they're not visiting specific parts of the course. These are called Intelligent Agents, and this video will help you learn how to use them. Go into your course and click on Edit Course. Then scroll down and click on Intelligent Agents in the Communication section. This will show the list of agents you've created so far. It will be blank if you've never used them before. Let's first make one that will email students if they haven't accessed the course recently. Click New and give it a name. Let's call this one Five Days No Access. Scroll down, making sure the Agent is Enabled box is checked. To make sure it isn't emailing you, we need to set it to just email students. Under Role in Class List, click Users with Specific Roles, and then check only the box next to Student. The next section gives two options, Login Activity and Course Activity. Login Activity checks to see if a student has logged into D2L in any way. This means that if they log in and go to a different course, or even go no farther than the D2L homepage, it won't email them. Instead, we want it to email them if they haven't come into our course, regardless of what they do in other parts of D2L. So click the box under Course Activity and leave the top button selected, which says User has not accessed the course in blank days. The bottom option is actually a way to send a kudos type email praising students who have accessed the course in the last X number of days. This can be a good way to give positive reinforcement, but you don't want to overdo these. For now, let's just stick with the top option. Type 5 into the blank and scroll down to the Actions area. Under Repetition, there are two choices. The first one will only email the student the very first time they haven't accessed the course for five days. It won't ever email them again, even if they return to the course and then miss five days again a month later. This option is useful if you want to praise students for accomplishing something or just give them one reminder and that's it. For us, we want to choose the second option, which will email them every time they meet the requirements of not accessing the course for five days. Check the box that says Send an email when the criteria are satisfied. If you click the blue link that says What special email addresses can I use, it will show you how to set it to email the students. Copy the one that says Initiating User with the curly braces and paste it into the To field. This will email all students who haven't accessed the course in five or more days. If you also want to get a copy, or if you want one to go to their advisor, you can add other email addresses in the CC or BCC fields. Click the link that says, What replace strings can I use in the subject and the message? to see options for how to auto-populate parts of the subject and message. Let's copy the org unit name one, again, also getting the curly braces. You can then paste that into the subject line, and it will put the name of this course. It's best to use this replace string instead of just typing it manually, so that we can copy it over for other courses or future semesters without having to change it all. Let's have the subject say, activity in org unit name. You may want to experiment with other ideas to catch their attention. If you go back to the list of possible strings, you'll see there is one for their first name initiating user first name. Let's copy that one and use it as our salutation, remembering to put a comma or colon after. Research shows that students are usually more attentive if emails are addressed to them by name. You want it to sound personalized, but also welcoming and supportive. Here's my example email. Initiating user first name. I noticed that you have an accessed org unit name in D2L since last course access date. I just want to check in and make sure everything is okay, and to remind you that there's still time to catch back up. I don't want you to fall too far behind, so please let me know if you have any questions or need any help. Professor Legacy. You'll see that I'm using three strings here to auto-populate parts of the email. The first is the student's name in the salutation. The second is the name of our course, and the third is the last day that they accessed the course. Using these strings will hopefully help the student feel like we are fully aware of their participation in the course, or lack thereof. Again, we don't want this to feel too much like Big Brother watching over them, which is why I tried to make my email warm and friendly. 
You can attach a file if you want. Otherwise, scroll down to Scheduling and click the Use Schedule checkbox. Click the Update Schedule button and it will open a pop-up window with some options. While the Repeats menu says Daily, Weekly, Monthly, and Annually, it actually gives you more choices than that. Let's select Daily, which is usually the default. Now, if we wanted to check for the non-accessing students once a week, we can put 7 in the Days box. Alternatively, we could select Weekly and put 1 in the Weeks box. Keep in mind that because we chose the option to email every time someone meets the criteria, we want to be careful not to run this too frequently. If we chose to run it every day and a student doesn't log in for a week, they'll receive an email on Day 5, Day 6, and Day 7. And perhaps that's what we want with this agent. If we chose to only have it run every five days, if a student's fifth day of not accessing the course happened the day after our agent runs, they wouldn't get notified until they had potentially missed 10 days. That may not be often enough for us. So just be thoughtful about how the trigger, five days of no course access, lines up with the frequency it runs. I'm gonna put daily and put two in the box so that it runs every other day. The Scheduled Dates option below lets you set a start and end date. You probably want the start date to be at least five days after the semester begins so that you aren't reminding students about not logging in before the class begins. You don't need to set an end date at all, but you should probably set one for the end of the semester at the latest, just to ensure it doesn't start emailing students after the semester is over. Click Save and Close when you're finished. Now let's test our agent to see if it's working. Click the down arrow next to the agent name and choose Practice Run. It gives you a confirmation pop-up to explain what it will do. Since this is a practice, it is just going to show us students meeting our criteria, but it won't actually send any emails right now. That's what we want, so click the Run button. It confirms that it's set to run and will send an email to you when it's finished. Once you receive the email, come back to the Intelligent Agents area and click on the information in the results column. It identifies any students who have not accessed our course in five or more days, and it lets us know that it didn't actually email them since this was just a practice run. The practice run is a good way to make sure your Intelligent Agent is set up correctly. If you want to turn one of the agents off for any reason, you can click the checkbox and click the Disable icon. It will then put a little flag with an X on it, showing that it's currently turned off. Do the same thing with the Enable button to turn it back on. Let's say you want a more assertive email to go to students if they haven't accessed the course in 10 days. Click the down arrow and choose Copy. Click on the copy to edit it and change the name to 10 Days No Access. You'll need to click the Agent is Enabled button since copies are disabled by default. Let's change the course activity element to say 10 days instead of 5. And let's edit our email to be a bit more concerned. Initiating user first name. I'm concerned because you haven't accessed org unit name in D2L since last course access date. You're starting to fall behind and I want you to be successful in this course. Please email me to talk about how to get caught up, Professor Legacy. I'm going to leave it running every two days and we can do a practice run again if we want. In addition to course access, we can create intelligent agents that notify students when they haven't accessed a specific element of the course. Let's click the New button again and enter a name. I'm going to call it Syllabus Access. Make sure the Agent is Enabled box is checked and choose the Users with Specific Roles again and pick Student. Skip Login Activity and Course Activity and instead go to the Release Conditions area. This is where you can create other triggers to set. Click Create and Attach to make a new one. Click the Select Condition Type drop-down menu. This is where you'll see all of the options for conditions that will trigger the agent to send an email. I'm going to go down to Content and select Not Visited Content Topic. Then I'll select the course syllabus under the Topic drop-down. Then click the Create button. Then you need to choose your repetition options. I'm going to go with the second option again. Click the box to send an email. Click the blue link below the BCC box if you need to find the string options again, and I'm going to copy the initiating user once again. In subject, I'll grab the org unit name string and paste it in the subject, followed by syllabus. 
In the message, I'll grab the first name string and type a short email. Hi, initiating user first name. I noticed that you haven't clicked on the course syllabus yet in our D2L course. Make sure you look at it before Friday, March 12th, since that's when the syllabus quiz is due. If you're having any trouble with accessing the file, please let me know so I can help. Professor Legacy. Scroll down and choose your schedule. I'm going to choose daily and then every three days. I'm also going to set a start date of the first date of the semester and an end date of March 12th when the syllabus quiz is due. Remember that you can change these settings to whatever works for you. Then just click Save and Close. And you can do a practice run again, just like we did with the others. You may have noticed in the agents that the reply email was a random email address. That means that if a student replies to your automated email, it won't ever get back to you. To avoid that, click on the gear icon that says Settings. Then click the bottom button that says Set Custom Values for this course. You can type your name in the left box if you want, and then put your hack email in the box on the right. Now, whenever a student chooses to reply back to one of these automated messages, it will come directly to you. This is just the basics of using intelligent agents, but it should help you engage your students a bit more, especially when their participation is starting to lag. Just be careful not to overdo these, as too many emails will likely make them tune out. If you have any questions, please contact me or anyone else on the CDI team.